So, let's jump to the beast. Okay. B1600 UHC. Okay. Is the first 4K model we do. Okay. And, uh, well, let's see. Well, this is the front panel. Doesn't mean much uh, for the moment. Let's just start to talk from the back panel. Okay. And then we will come back to, to the front one if we need to. Okay. So, looking into the back panel, we have four HDMI inputs and two SDI inputs. Every input has an scaler on it. So independently, input by input, I can work 4K if I want to, 1080p or 1080i. Okay? Independently, one by one. So if you see the SDI, they see 12G SDI, 3G SDI, or HD SDI. That's kind of the proof you can connect. It's automatic. Okay? The unit will have a an internal resolution. That internal resolution is the one we will have on the outputs. That is, one SDI output here, okay, and three HDMI outputs. And again, one by one, I will select if I want them to go out on 4K or I want them to go out on HD, okay? You don't need to have all the outputs in 4K. If you, need, if you have one 4K projector but you have HD screens, you need to be able to connect to it. If you have uh, HD cameras, but then you have a computer, I'm going out on 4K now, okay? So I'm going out in 4K to the mixer, that's input one. But then BO2 uh, and BO1 HD, they are HD, okay? So automatically they are detected and they know if we're working in 4K or in HD. If we go, this is a multi-viewer monitor, so this is the multi-viewer connected there. Multi-viewer is always in HD, okay, 1080p. Basically because it's easier for compatibility. Normally operators that we do uh, the jigs and the, <laughs> and the shows, uh, we don't need 4K, okay? Probably that would be a waste of, uh, of a screen to, to the operator. So we, we place HD and actually it's more compatible. So let's see, right now the unit, I will go to the output. Well, this is a prototype, I have to mention you. This is a prototype, this is the only unit we have in Europe, Middle East and Africa. The units will come in June, okay? So we still have uh, in uh, one month to finalize the prototype, the, the firmware, basically, hardware is fixed. Uh, but this means that uh, probably what you see here in terms of the order or the words you see here are more like a code words rather than the free final words, okay? So it's gonna be a little bit prettier. So now, on the output section, on processing, it's telling me it's working in 4K, okay? So internally the unit is working in 4K. Okay, good with that. If I go to the input, uh, no, if I go to signal status, Input number one is telling me is in 4K resolution. If I go to imp which is my computer, input number two is telling me it's 1080p. Okay, this means that because the resolution, internal resolution of the B1600 T is 4K because I decided that my computer is not the scale, it's just passing through. But then input two, which is uh, the BR1 AD HD, is being from HD upscaled to 4K. Okay. Good. Which other resolutions I can work on? If I want to decrease the internal resolution of the unit to 1080p and work it as a 1080 for everything, let's say, you can work with it. 1080, okay. Okay. Which other resolutions we have? Uh, let me jump into the next slide. Okay. We have full HD, we have 4K, and also we have DCI, this 4K, which is a little bit more wider, okay, is the Cinema 4K, they call it. Actually, it's from, uh, um, um, from Dolby, no, yeah, from Dolby, yeah, Dolby is the one, no, uh, what's the name? I forget about it, okay? Good, but uh, thanks to the Ultra Scaler, which is a new scaler we developed, that now it can handle sizes up to 4K, but 4K is not just about resolution, about pixels. 4K also is about HDR, okay? So, well, this is a summary of what is the HDR. If you are not familiar with the HDR, it's just uh, a composition of images that you can overlap, let's say, so you can have different uh, light uh, patterns or light settings for different, uh, for the same image. This example, so, is very clear. 
we have an LED screen on the back and a presenter in front. That's a situation we have on events and Congress and uh, corporate events very, very, very often. You can see, well, yeah. If not, you can move there maybe behind Rodrigo. Okay. Anyway, so if you are on a standard uh, SDR, which is a not HDR, let's say, okay. Uh, basically, what happens is that the brightness of the LED screen is making us to burn a little bit uh, this head and uh, the camera settings are to bright light so that doesn't allow us to see where the arm finishes and where the chest starts. If we are on an HDR situation, I can see all the head now and I can see the suit of the guy, the jacket of the, of the guy. Okay. So this is a very good example. So in live environment where we always do this kind of uh, events, if you have, if you're working with uh, LED screens, HDR is a very good thing to, to have in mind. Okay. And another thing, 4K, it's about the size, pixels, it's about the HDR, but it's also about the space color. Okay. So uh, since we have 4K, we have uh, another new space color thing, which is the BT2020. Okay, created I think it was Barco, the ones that created it. Basically, what it does, it gives to us a little bit uh, more green and a little bit more red. Okay, and again, I have a picture that shows perfectly the difference between uh, the standard HD space color BT709 or BT2020. Basically, I will not eat this. I will eat this. Okay. So if you're doing things with colors and so on, it's important. So ultra scaler, our ultra scaler, or the our scaler we ultra scaler we develop, is not just about frame rates and uh, sizes. It's also taking care about HDR and space color. And independently, input by input, you can input different space colors, and you can input HDR or not, and it will be adapted to wherever we select on the on the resolution i'm working now on dynamic range sdr because it's a projector and the space color is 2020 okay this is the internal one anyway the different products of different sources i connect they can have different one of this one it's going to be a scale or one well, adapted in this case okay the word the scale is a little bit not correct for that good uh if we go back to the front panel which is this one you can see uh well these are the uh, program preview composition stands and we're going to talk now about the composition elements okay we can do that will be controlled by all this section here is the composition thing okay what we can do we can do we have two composition elements composition element one which will be operated with this section here, can be a picture-in-picture picture or a keyer or both at the same time. Okay, that's composition one. Composition two, which is this one here, can be another picture-in-picture, picture, so a second picture-in-picture, picture, or another key, key two. Okay, so one by one. I can choose if I want to have, for example, I want to have a background, no problem, the logo of the company maybe, and then I will have one picture in picture for a PowerPoint, no problem, and a second picture in picture for a camera, the guy on the podium speaking. Can I do that? Yes, can I? Uh, I will need to do maybe instead of doing that, I will can work with just one picture in picture, but I will need to have a logo with the DSK. Can I do that? Yes. Okay. Let's do a couple examples. This part is not really finished on top, but anyway, you can see I have. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, sorry, let me modify this. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, okay, so there you go. Uh, this is the picture in picture. Okay, let me turn off this menu so you don't get confused. Okay, so right now I have the background, which is uh, my computer, or I can change it to a different source. Okay, and then I have one picture in picture here. Okay, 
I can play with it. Well, I can play with it uh, not too much, uh, to be honest, because this part is not done yet, okay? But you see here, I can do zooming inside of it and so on. That's uh, composition one. If I want to do another picture in picture, I can do it for composition two, okay? Uh, let me go back to the front panel. These two buttons, this one will turn on on program anything I do on composition one and this button DSK will turn on anything I do in the composition two okay so I can turn on and off picture also I can control the source that is inside the picture in picture I can control it with this row here okay so right now I'm controlling for example the picture in picture on top okay if I want to change it this part uh, Okay, I can control the input that is on the other picture in picture. Okay, just by changing here. So these two buttons change the color of this. Okay, good. Questions now? Composition is good. I mean, I can try to do. Uh, yeah, actually, I'm doing it. Um, you see that the picture in picture two, which is down here, uh, you can see through it. Okay, it's a combination of picture in picture and DSK, okay? I can get into the menu, DSK, because I'm working on the second composition element, and it's telling me, okay, what do you want to do? A picture in picture plus a key. What if I want to have a just a DSK? That's what I'm doing there, okay? And I can control, well, I can control the game and things here, okay? Uh, if I want to have just two picture in pictures, uh, I there you go. Okay. Good. Questions? No. Yep. Good. Uh, let's turn them off. Okay. And now, thanks to the uh, scalers and the uh, the size of the images we're working uh, with 4K. We are introducing something called region of interest, okay? Region of interest is the following. Imagine that this is a typical situation for, a, for an event we are doing, okay? So we have one round table, okay? Imagine this is a 4K shot, okay? I'm taking this uh, image with a 4K camera. Would be great if I can just react. Ah, okay. Sorry, it was my fault. Yeah. I will select different regions of interest. Okay? So from one 4K shot, I will chop another four different shots. Okay? That will create channels one to five. It will be the same input, input uh, 4K camera, maybe coming from the SDI. And I will put that on channels one, two, three, four, and five. And then channel one will be the general shot, 4K. Everybody's talking at the same time. Then they are interviewing to the first lady. Okay, they go to the second channel. So just with one camera shot, 4K camera shot, I can pretend I have five cameras, one 4K and four HD. Okay, this can be chopped in 920 by 1080p. 1080, sorry, 920 by 1080. Okay, and you will be able with the joystick you will be able to move this region of interest in the uh, multi-viewer, okay? So it will be very easy, simple and very easy. So on the first channel, you will see uh, these um, purple colors, purple uh, boxes to move across them, okay? Good, uh, finalizing, uh, supported formats. We are compiling with uh, all the 4Ks out there just one limitation, just uh, one exception, which is we don't do 24 frames, okay? We understand that if you're doing 4K in a professional way, uh, for us 4K it starts on 50, 59, or 60, okay? Uh, we want to avoid these kind of products or cameras that tell you uh, it's 4K, and then you discover that on the specifications they say 4K, you have to decrease the frame rate to, to half of it, okay? Anyway, that camera, if you can set it to HD, it will work anyway, okay? But we don't do 24 uh, frame rates. All the rest are just everything out there, okay? Good. Uh, 
audio part. The audio part is very complete, okay? It's, uh, it has an audio mixer inside, very powerful, that has, well, it has two XLR inputs and two XLR outputs, so you will be able to de-embed. De-embed what? Okay, you can take every HDMI input, can take two, HDMI, two audio channels, okay? And the SDI inputs, the two SDI inputs, they can take 16 channels. Okay? You can mix all that with delays. By every input, you will have delays. So if you're having problems with the lip sync, you will be able to correct it, okay? Good, uh, and that will be embed on all the outputs, and it will be embed on the XLR outputs as well, okay? We have one function called, uh, this time is uh, audio follows video. So we can give to the audio guy, we can give just two channels going out from the XLR, and just the image we see on the screen, is the image the guy has on the mixer, okay? And the same goes to the other way around. If we have an audio guy that is going to make microphones and everything, and we need to take the audio of that console and put it on the SDI to go to uh, maybe a press room or a VIP room somewhere, we can take it from here and embed it on the on the outputs, on the video outputs, okay? But it is very powerful. Well, summarizing. Basically, you have a different... Uh, uh, kinds of inputs, HDMI's, HDI's, that they will work in H channels. Why we need to mention the difference between, we have six connectors for the inputs, but we have eight channels. Okay, when you do region of interest, you start to take more channels. Okay? Also because we have two still images. You can load from the USB memory two still images, and you can have that on one channel to play. Okay? So in total, we have six input connectors, two still images, and then the region of interest can make uh, that grow a lot. So we have those connectors, but the mixer is eight channels to mix them, okay? Then, uh, four simultaneous outputs, yes, but output by output, let me show you. I can go here, output, connectors, and one by one, I can select them if I want them to be feed from the program or preview bus or auxiliary bus, we have one auxiliary bus, okay? And I can select if I want them to be in 4K or HD. So right now, for example, uh, HDMI 1 down conversion, down conversion from 4K to HD is disabled. So I'm going to projector in 4K. If I have another screen that I need to play on HD, I can connect it on HDMI 2. And by enabling this, now I can connect to an HD monitor, no problem, at the same time. Okay? And it can be from program, but imagine that this is a monitor for me. So the only thing I need is an auxiliary bus to have my computer. I can change here. Sorry. So the sensitivity of the knob <laughs> is, is very sensitive at this point. Okay. So I can select an auxiliary. So now HDMI 2 is working on HD, not in 4K, and it's just for the auxiliary. The auxiliary I control with the, with the uh, buttons on top. Okay. <coughs> Good. Uh, what else? Well, high quality processing, 444, 10 bits. Okay. Uh, normally, some of our competitors, for example, uh, the Blackmagic uh, mixers and so on, they normally work in 422. For us, we always work in 444, okay? Because we are on, uh, we deal with LED screens, we deal with computers, where actually the 444 uh, is uh, really a very good help. Uh, we are compatible with the 4Ks out there, not just uh, 4K, we can do DCI as well. We are compatible with SDR, HDR, different space colors. We support 8, uh, 12G, uh, also. SHT and 3G, SDI, HDMI uh, 2.0, we have all uh, frame sync and converges and all the inputs, we already that's uh, kind of uh, obvious. Two composition elements, so I can have a one background and two pictures and pictures if I want. Uh, Built-in audio mixer, support LAN control, if you do installations or integrations, you can control the unit from uh, the LAN port on the back. Okay, you are introducing the region of interest, LAN conversion and the two still images. Questions? No? Really? Do you have questions? You, have, you can do that. No, you don't. You don't want to. No? Well, um, the products are here. I have to go to the airport, but I think we have uh, at least 30 minutes. Okay? So if you want to play with them, are here to play. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for the people who is watching the 
the streaming. Thank you to the people from Bazardo Video. Thank you, Chavez Ochefe. Thank you. They always treat me very well, okay, here in Lisbon. Uh, thank you for your time.